So we're going to now take a look at the equine hip. Kind of superficially here, we can see a muscle coming down this way. You can see it on this one as well. Coming down like this, it's been somewhat cut. But that is going to elevate the nose and the upper lip. And so that is the levator nasolabialis. You see a muscle kind of cutting through it, coming towards the nostril. That's going to be the caninus muscle. This muscle here is a real important one. This guy here is the levator labii superioris. This guy is going to be important for the flamen response. Okay, and we find deep to that, under here, over here we see a great big nerve, which is the infraorbital nerve coming through the infraorbital foramen, which is a branch of the maxillary, so we know this is sensory. Okay? Here we have the bucinator muscle, and down here we have the depressor labii inferioris, which is going to bring down the lower lip, and we should find kind of right below the margin of the lip here, a nerve, which is going to be the mental nerve coming out through the mental foramen right here. And that is also sensory to the lower lip. Okay. Now we see these nerves coming across here. This, these are branches of the facial nerve. The facial nerve is going to be, remember, allow us to do faces. So this is the dorsal buccal branch. The ventral buccal branch is, hmm, okay, we don't see division till here. So here's dorsal buccal, ventral buccal here. And some of these guys, we'll see it branching much earlier than that. And if we transect the masseter muscle here, we can see some deep veins. We're going to have the deep facial vein. It's still not seen, but it's going to be running along in here. That one, if you're trying to restrain an animal by its head and you can't reach the jugular, you find the facial crest and drop down just below it. Put in your needle and you'll find that deep facial vein so to draw blood. Here is the buccal vein. Both of those are going to join the facial vein. Okay, So running down here, we're going to see most laterally is going to be the prodded duct and the facial vein and then the facial artery. Okay, And then this here is the mandibular lymph nodes. Okay. We see right here the mandibular salivary gland, kind of crescent shaped. And all of this here is the parotid salivary gland from whence this duct comes. Okay. Now let's look a little bit more in here. We see the common carotid artery coming up. We're going to have the internal carotid coming off here so that then we continue as the external carotid. Its first branch is the occipital artery. As we come up here, we see the lingual facial artery coming off and running alongside that and lateral to the external carotid is going to be the hypoglossal nerve. And we continue up here. Here's the masseteric artery. Masseteric artery is one that we can take a pulse from, as is the facial artery. We have the caudal auricular. And then here we have the termination of the external carotid as the superficial temporal and the masseteric diving deep here. Coming off that superficial temporal, is the transverse facial artery 
running with that will be the auriculotemporal nerve it's cut here and it's going to have a branch that's going to join the dorsal buccal branch. So here as a branch of the facial we also have the auriculopalpebral nerve. It's going to have a branch that's going to come over here to the palpebra of the eye. So remember that's facial so that's motor and so we want to anesthetize that as it comes over this crest right here and that would keep the animal from being able to close their eye and then if we can palpate the supraorbital foramen and inject up here that's a branch of the trigeminal nerve and so that would take away the sensation from the eye so as you work around the eye the horse isn't feeling that. Let's have a look at the inner surface now. Okay, so here looking at the nasal cavity, we should have a small opening on the inner surface here. You see the small opening here, that's the opening of the nasal lacrimal duct. Okay, and so we go into the nasal cavity, we have the ventral nasal turbinates, the dorsal nasal turbinates, the dorsal nasal meatus, middle nasal meatus, ventral nasal meatus, and then this space between the turbinates and the septum is the common nasal meatus. If we're going to pass a nasogastric tube, we're going to pass it through the junction of the ventral nasal meatus and the common nasal meatus. That'll take us right in here into our nasal pharynx. Okay, we should see a slit right here. Yeah, very nice slit. This is the opening into the auditory tube, and you see an outpocketing of that is the guttural pouch here. We see this ridge right here is the stylohyoid bone, separating the lateral from the medial compartment of our guttural pouch. Look at our tonsils. We have the lingual tonsils on the base of the tongue. We have the palatine tonsils here. We also have tonsils of the soft palate and pharyngeal tonsils. These later two tend to regress with age. So here once again we have the nasopharynx here, the oropharynx here, we have the sublingual caruncle here on which the mandibular salivary gland empties. And we're going to have along in here some polystomatic sublingual salivary glands. So in the horse, we don't have any monostomatic sublingual salivary glands. We just have polystomatic. Here looking at the larynx. Okay, here's our soft palate, which is going to generally sit over the epiglottis like this because these guys are obligate nasal breathers. Here we have the epiglottic cartilage. This primary portion here coming in is going to be the ventricle. Here we have the laryngeal ventricle. It's going to have a vestibular Okay, let me start that all over again. So here we have the epiglottis, and the soft palate sits over that epiglottis because these guys are obligate nasal breathers. Here we have the epiglottic cartilage. We come into the vestibule of the larynx. We have the vestibular fold here on the rostral part of our laryngeal ventricle. Then our vocal fold is on the caudal part. So here's our vocal fold, our vocal process of our arytenoid cartilage, our corniculate process of the arytenoid cartilage. So this region right here is known as the glottis. And so the space between the two sides is the rima glottitis. Okay, so that was our epiglottic cartilage. Arytenoid cartilage, 
our thyroid cartilage we can see more right in here on the ventral surface we only see a small portion of it here because we have a the thyroid notch okay so that's the thyroid notch okay if we look at the muscles here on the dorsal surface we have cricorytenoideus dorsalis remember that one is going to attach here on the arytenoid so when it contracts it's going to open the airway down in here we're going to have the cricorytenoideus lateralis that one when it contracts is going to close the airway adjacent to it here much of this we're seeing right in here is the thyroarytenoideus so it's going to pull those arytenoid cartilages ventrally loosen the vocal fold to decrease pitch and then down here we have the cricothyroidus which is going to be the muscle to increase the pitch all of these muscles except for this last one are innervated by the caudal laryngeal of the recurrent laryngeal and this one here as well as the sensory from the mucosa is innervated by the cranial laryngeal nerve and if we come over here like this here we can see this muscle coming up is our sternothyroidus then we have our thyrohyoidus and this one here is our thyropharyngeus and on its rostral border is the cranial laryngeal nerve okay let's see what else do we got here so looking in here once again here is our lingual facial artery and coursing lateral to it right there coursing lateral to the external carotid and coursing with that lingual facial artery is the hypoglossal nerve and we see more dorsal and coursing medial to the external carotid is the glossopharyngeal nerve here we see our vagus nerve, vagosympathetic trunk here separates into the vagus and the sympathetic portion. Here's our cranial cervical ganglia, our sympathetic portion. Okay. And up in here we should also see our accessory nerve here. Okay. And so remember, those nerves are right up adjacent to the wall of the guttural pouch. So if we get a guttural pouch infection, especially a fungal infection that penetrates through the membrane here, we can get damage to these nerves. Okay, so with each of these except for the accessory, we may see trouble swallowing or chewing. but with the vagus nerve we may also see gastric or cardiovascular problems okay and then also because the internal carotid artery is closely associated with this pouch if we get a bout of epistaxis or nasal bleed we may see that once or twice and then come in and the animals laying on the floor in a pool of blood dead because it penetrated through that internal carotid artery. Not a good thing. So what is the function of the guttural pouch? Well as the animal breathes, especially when it's running, air is going to circulate up through that and that's going to cool the air in that internal carotid going to the brain. Otherwise the horse would fry its brain. 